Hey everybody, hope and pray that you're doing well today as we come to our word from the word. And today that word is start. Start. Now, yesterday we talked about, um, you know, returning and returning. Uh, we were going through the prayers, uh, as we'll be doing for a while, uh, going through the prayers in scripture and the times where we see people call on the Lord. And specifically Abram, he uh, he gets away from and out of the will of God and and doing things kind of scheming on his own. And we saw yesterday that he was returning to the place where he had been. So as we're going to go in order for most of our prayers, uh, today we're actually going to go backwards. Um, because yesterday we were in Genesis 13. And then today I uh, want us to look at uh, Genesis chapter 12. Uh, and this is where he goes back to in verse 8. This is, and he moved from there. This is after... God has called him and told him exactly what to do. He uh, gathers up all his belongings and heads out. Um, and there's a, a common theme that we see uh, through Abram everywhere he goes. So uh, Genesis chapter 12, verse 8 says, And he moved from there to the mountain east of Bethel, and he pitched his tent with Bethel on the west and Ai on the east. And there he built an altar to the Lord and called on the name of the Lord. Now, there's this common thing. This is what I was talking about yesterday, that he was uh, he was returning after he had gotten to Egypt and was telling these lies and, and um, trying to deceive the people there and gets them into trouble. And God essentially just rescues him from that trouble that he got himself into. And we saw yesterday where he was going uh, back to where he was formerly. And this is where he was going back to, back to where he had last worshipped back where he had last called upon the name of the Lord. And so, uh, you know, our word for today is start is because it's sometimes we do have to go back to where we started. Um, sometimes we have to realize that, you know, there was a fork in the road and we took the wrong turn. And while that's not a, I guess, a perfect analogy, because we can't always go back and we can't change what path we have taken, but we can try to get back on the right path. Uh, yes, sometimes it's not the easiest road to get there. And a lot of times we've made it difficult on ourselves. I mean, talking about prayer, uh, getting into a normal routine of serious uh, time in prayer. Uh, if you haven't been doing that, then getting back to that or even starting that, it's not going to be easy. But I can guarantee you it's going to be worthwhile. Because you're going to see that God can do all kinds of things through your prayer life. And it, the thing that we see with Abram as he goes throughout the land, everywhere he goes, he builds an altar. And see, that, that shows us he, he builds an altar and calls upon the name of the Lord. And, and that shows us hand in hand how worship and prayer go together. Uh, you know, that we should never pray without worshiping. We should never worship without prayer. The two go together. And and it's amazing that every time, you know, we come to prayer, that as we're calling on the name of the Lord, uh, you think even back to the Lord's Prayer. We talked about this Sunday, uh, just to, to how Jesus begins that model prayer. You know, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. You know, I mean, it's a, it's a worshipful, uh, it's, it's a, um, a humbling yourself to lift up. Uh, our Heavenly Father to understand uh, where we should be and where He is. And so as we do that, it, it gets us in an, in an ideal situation where we're already ready to worship in our prayer life. But see, not only that, but as we begin to pray and uh, as we begin to pray about the promises of God and we begin to, uh, to pray about even the things that we don't know that are coming, but we know that God is in control. You know, there again, you can go back to where we started Sunday talking about there in Second Chronicles chapter 20, how uh, Jehoshaphat was praying and he was going back, thinking about all the times that God had already been there, the times that God had already answered. And I guarantee you that you could think of today many times in your life already in the past where God has been there for you. Maybe in the distant past, maybe in the very uh, the very recent past, maybe in the past few days, uh, past several weeks, that God has just been there when you felt like you needed him the most. See, Scripture tells us that he is faithful even when we are not faithful. 
And that, that's such a blessing. But as we think about that and we pray about the promises of God, that should get us to beginning in worship. It, it's, it's where we should set up those spiritual markers and those spiritual altars in our lives where, where we get back to where we were worshiping, get back to the attitude of, of lifting up the name of Jesus. Uh, and also, as we're in prayer, lifting up the name of the the names of the lost, the names of the the sick, the ones who are in need of a a desperate miracle. Just lifting up general prayers as well, lifting up our our leader, our government leaders, our uh, police and fire, and all our rescue personnel, and and all those who are on the front lines right now. You got those that are fighting for our freedom all over this world. And you've got those who are fighting for our health right here in our nation. So, I mean, the list could go on and on. But do you understand that even as we come together uh, in prayer, as we come to the Lord in prayer, that we will worship him? It's a form of worship. Because when we're praying, we're understanding that he is worthy of our praise. He is worthy of us basically running everything by him before we do anything. I mean, it's kind of that idea that, you know, you want to check with him before you do anything. That's that's part of worship is is understanding who he is and who we're not. <laughs> because, see, when we realize that we're not God and we're not in control. Then we're putting our priorities in the right order. We're saying, God, I want your will to be done. Above all else, no matter what it looks like here on earth, God, I want your will to be done on earth just as it is in heaven. See, in heaven, nobody questions the will of God. And here on earth, we seem to question every aspect of God's will. But see, when we come to this time of prayer and it, and it just has you have to start somewhere. So even if you don't remember where maybe it was last where you were really worshiping and in a time, a, a moment in your spiritual walk with, with Christ, that, that there was a time where you were really worshipful and you were really just spending serious time in prayer, then, then if you can't go back to that place, then I'm challenging you to start today. There's no better time than right now to start and get serious in your prayer life, but also serious in your worship. And I promise you'll see how those two are interconnected. So won't you start today? God bless you. And I pray you have a great, great day.